Welcome everybody to our first look at Transport Fever. I've been fortunate enough to get a beta key before the game actually launches to have a quick look and see what the game is all about. So yep, this is currently a beta version, so between now and November the 8th, I believe, when the game actually launches on Steam, a couple of things may change. Um, I'm not sure if this is susceptible to any updates between now and then, and there's just, I think there's only about five days um, before the game launches, so I doubt the beta version will be updated before then, but who knows? So, potentially what you're going to see may change a little bit between now and the launch date. Um, just a quick um, bit about the launch itself, it, it's going to be on Steam, it's currently um, on offer, um, you can save 10%. So in, in British pounds this is, it's 24.29 currently and after November the 8th it'll go back to its full price of 26 pounds and 99 pence. I'm not quite sure what that is in dollars, um, with the way the money is at the moment it's a bit harder for me to figure out. But yeah, it's probably going to be, It's not I, from my point of view I think that's not a bad price for a game. So the game's made by Urban Games, they're a Swiss company. And I do believe the only other game they've made is Train Fever, um, which I have seen. I've never played, but I'm aware of it. I think it was a few years ago now. Um, so they, it's not their kind of first game they've ever made. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into a free game. So this is like Sandbox. There is a campaign and there's a tutorial, which I've not looked at either. I've got into the free game just to make sure the graphics and everything are fine for recording. And, and it seemed to work quite well, so let's go for it. Okay, so we'll go with Europe. Um, the one thing to bear in mind, um, especially if you're English like myself, the vehicles all drive on the right-hand side of the road. So when you're placing bus stops and things, just bear that in mind, because I tend to place them on the left side of the road and then realize the vehicles have to do kind of like a full U-turn and come back, but yeah, there we are. I'll go for a medium map because once the game launches, um, we'll probably go to a brand new series, so we'll do a few episodes here where we can. Um, if the game doesn't change, then we'll probably continue, but just I don't want anything too big to start off with. Um, we'll go with a medium terrain type. I don't want it too flat, I don't want it too hilly either, so we'll start at 1850. So we're literally going back to horse and carts, it's fantastic, it's brilliant. Um, I'll go with easy because Although I've played a game that's very similar to this a long time ago when I was a lot younger, it's not quite the same. So for those of you that are probably familiar with Transport Tycoon, it will have a similar feel. Uh, but I don't think there's any AI opponents in this game. I think it's just you managing your transport company. I don't think there's any opponents. I could be wrong, um, but from what I can see there isn't. So let's start. Okay, here we are. And as you can see, I mean, this is a medium map. It looks fairly big. The graphics are really nice as well. But if we kind of go to one corner of the world, let's find... Right, so this is the far corner. And if we back up, I've got to get used to the mouse controls because they're, they're inverted. <laughs> and here we go. So that's, that's fairly big. There's a lot of towns around. Um, there's lots of industries as well. Margate, that's, um, that's in Kent, that is. So that's a, an English town. And so is Worthing, Pudsey, in fact quite a few of these are English, don't know, that must be as well, but I'm not aware of the town name. So for those of you that have also played City Skylines, it's kind of very similar graphically I would say to that game, so if you come right down here, I think, I would say it's very similar, okay, the, it's more old fashioned at the moment because it's, you know, I think it was the 1850s, yep. But there is, there is people that walk up and down the high street as well, which you can click on. They're all um, individual people. Um, they're all living in a certain place. They go to work wherever they work and, and they shop. So it's it's kind of very rich and very lifelike environment. We do have the RCI. So residential, commercial and industry. So you can tell which buildings are what. So when you're putting your, your stations in, you know kind of what the catch, um, catchment area is going to be. You'll have to excuse me, I'm, I'm kind of battling a cold at the moment, so if, um, if I trip up over myself a little bit, I'll sound a little bit congested, that's why. So, uh, for example, if I put a bus stop, um, which has to be on the side of a road, there is actual stations, you'll see the catchment area. 
which is really good. So you know exactly where you're putting them and what area you're going to capture. So if I was going to put in a, um, is it this one, cargo. Again, a truck station. Now to rotate, I think it's N and M. Yes, there we go. So it lets you know exactly which buildings are going to be serviced by it, which I think is really cool. Okay, so I think the first thing we'll do is maybe set up a little transport network so between two towns maybe let me see now I'm looking for somewhere that's not too far away they all look fairly far apart but the other thing I'm looking for is the terrain itself now we can actually look at the contour lines and the reason I'm interested in this is it does actually affect vehicles um, so if they've got to go uphill they will slow down if they haven't got the horsepower to actually get them up there and when I say horsepower we are literally using horses at this stage so that's something to bear in mind especially in the early stages of the game as you, as you get on I'm guessing you're going to get more powerful vehicles so it won't be a big problem okay now this looks fairly flat doesn't it between these two towns so we've got Stevenage and Featherstone I think if we set up a little passenger service between the two now I'm using the um, W, A, S and D keys to, to move around, but you can edge scroll as well. Although I've noticed, and this could be a beta issue, that I can scroll left, up and down, but for whatever reason I can't edge scroll to the right. I'm not sure why that's happening. It seems to kind of work occasionally. It's a little bit intermittent, but I'm guessing that's a bug. I'm also kind of moving around using the, uh, the mouse wheel. So the first thing is uh, we don't need to build roads. So you can build train tracks and roads as well. I don't know if the towns will build them. I know the towns are dynamic and they will grow and adapt um, to what's, whatever's happening. So it's all very lifelike. I think if we switch to, to buses, I'm going to put the depot in first because this is where all our vehicles are going to come from. Oh, I just push the... Uh, delete key which is B. B B is delete and N and M is rotate so you can rebind the keys anyway I believe yeah which I'll probably do at some point just to make it suit me a little bit better and I think I might actually go for stations as opposed to bus stops because as the game goes by I do believe certain buildings can be upgraded as well okay so this let me put the RCI on now I want this to capture, I mean, this is mainly business on this side, so this is all the industry. People need to go to work, so there's no problem with having one of these here. But I'm thinking more moving people around and taking them shopping. And also taking them home I guess. So let's, let's rotate this around and find a good place. I think you can build over buildings. Now I'm not sure if this upsets the local people or not. Whether you can just do it as much as you want, but... I don't really want to be taking out houses where I can. So let's. Again, they drive on the right side of the road, don't they? So maybe I should bear that in mind. Can we sneak one in here? Four buildings will be removed. Okay, we'll do it. I just hope we didn't upset too many people. And we'll take another one. There's a bigger one here as well. But for the moment, this will do. So we were going to go to, I think, Featherstone, wasn't it? Let's come over here. This, this town's a lot bigger. Again, I think maybe if we... See, the, the actual catchment area for that is fairly big. So I think we'll go there, okay. And I'm also going to put in another um, station. That's a train one. So we'll put another depot over here. I don't know if the vehicles actually do go in for maintenance once in a while, but I'll have a look in a second and find out. But I want to set some vehicles from this side and some from the other so they'll meet in the middle because they're not very quick. Okay, so there is an upgrade option. So that must be for the actual depot itself. And we can upgrade the bus. Okay, so oh, there's lots of options there. I, I do believe there's over 120 vehicles in the game as well, so there's lots to play with. So we're going to go with some stagecoaches. I'm guessing the horse wagon is... Yeah, that's freight. Passenger. Okay. 
So I'm going to do set, set four off from this side and four off from the other. Oh, we can change the colours as well. I didn't really see anything change. Apparently, from what I read, and I've not seen the option yet, I've only maybe played with this for about 10 15 minutes, but apparently you can put your logos on, on the side of your vehicles as well, so. Which is, which is kind of cool. So we're going to do four vehicles from here. And we'll set a line, we'll do a new line. So add a station, and the first station will be this one. And then we'll come all the way across here and that one so we've got two and the good thing about putting a station in as opposed to a bus stop is that the fact that they can actually come in and turn around whereas if I'd have put the bus stop let's say they're coming down this way and I've put it on that side they'd probably have to come here and turn all the way back and yeah when you're English and the rest of the world drives on the opposite side of the road it is a little bit frustrating um, so let's buy some more. Now these are 13,000 each. I don't think you can change the currency. You can change like miles and horsepower and tons, things like that, but I don't think you can change the currency. And this is how much money we currently have as well. I think you can take loads out, but it's not really not, not an issue at this point. Um, so we'll, we'll tell them all to take line one and we'll come over here and we'll do the same again. So we'll set all the vehicles that are in here to line one. If I unpause the game, actually, let's come down here. Let's watch them come out. The graphics are really, really good, actually. And then it, now the, the good thing is the AI has figured there. It's best to send one the opposite way as well. So one has gone that way and one's gone the opposite. That will probably do the same thing. And the idea, I guess, is to space vehicles out. Otherwise, they're all going to be clumped together. And it, you can imagine having four here, but nothing at all for the re for the rest of the route. So they're trying to space them out, which is which is very good. So we got them ones going, and the other ones over here. I can see from a distance. You can see the vehicles um, shown by these little icons here. Now these are very slow, this is normal speed. So, oh look, we've got the people as well, that's coming. So we've got all these people wandering around, and you can click on them. It tells you where they're going. So it tells you which building, and what, what that building actually needs, and gives you all that information. And I love metrics, I love to know what's going on. It just makes it a little bit more satisfying. So what else? Um, their move pre preference is fast, so they're going to look for the fastest possible route to get to wherever they're going. This may not be the fastest route, but it just depends. So it tells you where the where the home is. So it's <laughs> that's the building number in in Stevenage. The shop where they prefer to go also in Stevenage and work also in Stevenage. And they prefer to travel by foot probably because they're staying in their hometown. They can get around pretty quick. What about the next person? A bit like, they're going to the shop as well. So they're interested in cheapness. So each individual person has kind of a preference on what, what they want to do and how they want to get about this person fast I think there's a slow as well I've seen slow Oops. fast okay let's close all these up so if you click on the station itself it's going to let us know how many people are being picked up etc you can rename uh, the different stations. I think you can rename the vehicles. Yep. Don't know if you can rename the town, Stevenage. You can. What else? So we got line usage and poor. So <laughs> not really using it much at the moment. Shopping facilities, jobs. So it lets you know. Yeah, it lets you know everything. This this is what I love. You can really kind of tailor everything because you know what's going on. Same with businesses. It also tells you the land value. Now the land value will go up depending on what's actually happening in the town. So the more businesses that are, are kind of booming here and more houses um, that are built, the um, actual land value will go up, which I'm going to assume will make it more expensive for us to do any upgrades. So the land value is pretty much the same. Ah, here we go. We have a building upgrading already. 
No, it, it could come back as the same model. I have noticed that. But this is probably a direct effect of what we've just done. So it's a new house, no land value available, six people unemployed and there's six residents. And it was built in 1850. Well, not quite built, they've started construction. So it's $100 per squared meter. That's the current land value. We'll have to try and remember that and come back later on and have a look. Well, maybe this, this house here is probably the best one because it's right next to the station or commercial building, it's not a house. Okay, so let's go and have a look, see where our vehicles are. They're really, really slow as you can see. They've not got very far yet. What's going on up here? So they've probably not got anyone in yet. Because they have to kind of do... I think they have to do a full route before people actually will use it. So once a vehicle has gone to both stations, people will start using it. We've got some more buildings upgrading here. So, in a sense, we're not going to make much money just yet. I could speed the game up. Oh, there we go. One person waiting. So, because I think both stations have been serviced at both ends, now people will um, come here, which is what we need. Okay. So, that's kind of one side of the game, moving the passengers. The other side is freight. So, we'll probably have a quick look at that. What have we got here? If you zoom out, you can see this little icon. It looks like a, a barrel, so I'm going to assume it's oil. But if we click on it, it tells you anyway. Oh, well, it produces crude oil. It's producing 82 a year, and its maximum limit at this stage is 100. And there's no upgrade or downgrade scheduled. But I don't know if that means that it can't upgrade anymore. I'm, I'm judging by the this plot of land here. It looks like it's been flattened, so I don't know if, if this building owns that land or not. Maybe that's the kind of the distance it's going to grow. So, if this is producing crude oil, we need to know where it's going to put them. And it's got 45 stored. So, what's it going to do with the oil? Well, it's only mining it, so I'm guessing there's got to be a refinery somewhere. Here we go. So, that's got the crude oil barrel, and it's got a little arrow pointing to I'm going to assume fuel or oil and there's a little fire as well so probably both so that's oil and fuel there we go so that's going to produce both of those which will then need to be sent somewhere so if we go into the town let's have a quick look what are the commercial buildings wanting so they want in tools food and goods and the businesses there we go fuel cargo and construct so there's lots and lots of different things to consider and that's what I really love it is a literally a proper management game and I don't think there's much in the way of customization from building the towns I mean there is terraforming but just watching the towns grow and managing the business and actually making things work right I think it's gonna be lots of fun so is that the closest place for this oil it looks fairly flat so I think we could actually we could actually send stuff there but then the, the goods it's gonna make we could do we send into the towns as well I think a train might be a good idea now this isn't gonna be cheap that's the only thing we've got to bear in mind and I guess here as well because it, we're going back in the day <laughs> the train isn't gonna be that powerful either so we we really have to we would have to place this well. Again, it has a catchment area. So is this the is this the depot? This is the depot itself. So let's put a depot over here. And cargo. So we got a freight station. Well, different sizes again. So we we'll go for this one. And I'm assuming it does the same thing that the. Um, that the other depots do for people. So once it's connected, it lights up and lets you know exactly what buildings it's going to be picking up. So that's perfect. Now I've never done this before. So this is my first go. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not too sure what I'm doing. Okay, you have to drag it. Too much curvature. Okay. Huh. Well, there you go. 
my first go isn't the best one. Okay, so I've done something a little bit wrong there, it seems. Oh, keep your finger on the mouse button. So much curvature. Too much curvature, too much slope. Okay, let's let's get rid of that. And that. Now let me put the station on the end of this. Ah, there we go. Cool, that was difficult. Okay, so let's get some track. Oh, so it's going to automatically terraform. Now this is going to cost more money the more it has to do it, so we're definitely going to churn through this money very quickly, but I would assume oil is a, a very profitable thing to be to be playing around with. Now we want to try and keep this on the same level if we can. So I'm going to do it in kind of smaller sections. It's going to drop down here a bit, but, but it's trying its best, by the looks of it, to keep the track on the same the same level or the same gradient so it's raised the ground here which is what we want really now this this oh he's gonna build a tunnel that is amazing I didn't actually think he would do that it's gonna cost me a lot of money though but why not <laughs> yikes <laughs> gonna, gonna be poor in a second okay so it might be an idea if I put the um, the train depot on, not the depot, the actual station itself, so I know where we're connecting to. There we go. And if I've done this right, which I probably haven't, too much. Yeah, I thought that might happen. Might have to move the station itself. Let's go to that. Let's delete some of this. Yes. Oh no, come on. Let's <laughs> play nice. Too much slope, but it looks like it wants to connect. See, now this is really, really finicky. Is there a way of raising the track manually, I wonder? Ah, oh, there we go. Clearly I'm not very good at building train tracks. I've left all these like, big gaps in everything. Which is not good. And now, the good thing is, because it's in the cap catchment area, we don't have to physically put trucks here to travel there and back. It will automatically, whatever this produces, automatically come to the station. Which is really good. So, if we come out of this menu, We'll click our first station and buy a train if we can afford it. There's only the one train. So we will buy one of those. Does it tell me anything about this train? So it's got 68 horsepower. Uh, da, 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 running cost, lifespan 30 years. Can we change the colours? It doesn't appear that that's actually changing colour, but maybe it is. Okay, so how much can it pull? That is the question. So we're going to be taking oil, so we've got goods, open wagon. Oh, it's so many options, isn't it? Multiple locomotives. So which one of these is going to take oil? Aha. Coal, iron ore, stone grain and slag. Log, steel planks, construction material. That's tools, food and goods. Huh. Well, that's not useful. <laughs> How are we to take... How are we to take crude oil? Huh. Well, there's a... There's a question. I'm guessing we can't do that yet. Well, that's slightly annoying, isn't it? I just thought I'd have been able to do that straight away. Let me have a look at vehicles. Actually, we need, if we go to a vehicle depot, 
So as you can tell, this literally I haven't played this game yet. And this is <laughs> this is how I wanted it to, wanted it to be. So you can actually see what it'd be like um, when you actually play it yourself for the first time. Maybe I've just made a stupid idiot mistake. Crude oil. I'm guessing that maybe we just do not have the actual um, things we actually need yet. In fact, you know what? We could have just done that today, couldn't we? Should we do it? Should we? I think we should. So we've got small country roads, small street, 12 miles an hour. Okay. expensive oh it doesn't like what I'm trying to do there okay there we go so we'll do it with vehicles so we'll buy a depot and we'll check that there and we'll buy hmm. how much did this produce well it's not produced any but it can produce a hundred okay so the wagon can carry oil. How much can each one hold for? Okay, so let's... I haven't got any money. I guess it was the end of a year. Yep. So I've probably had to pay off. <laughs> yes, I've had to pay all kinds of expensive expenses. So that's probably why we're not getting any money. So let's buy five of these, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Um, set line, new line, and it's automatically changed the colour, which is really good. Do I, do I have to set a station? I think I have to put a station in, don't I? That might be useful. So let's rotate that around. Now the question is, will it class this as the same station as that, or not? It probably won't. And if we come all the way over here, let's check another one in. Fantastic. So add a station, this one, and add another station, that one. Excellent. So that's line two set up. And if we click on here, set line to all of them to line two. I might rename the lines actually. It might make it a little bit easier. So we're going to get different ones going different ways here as we saw before so that's going to produce fuel and was it fuel and what was the other one oil yes any of these buildings here need those no do the buildings over here need them ah. so then we could potentially run some more vehicles this way to take into the industry. I reckon it's going to be very slow going now. Just because we're using horse drawn carts essentially. That's going to take a, a long time. Aha! First cargo item waiting. So that was an achievement. And that was the other thing. The Steve achievements are in this game as well. And I do believe it's quite moddable. So the Steam Workshop will also be available. Which is really, really good. I think we might actually buy some more. And we'll set them all on line two as well. Did I do that? I'm able to find path to stop. Okay. I wonder why he's doing that. rename this one so I can remember line 2 so if we put that to oil and at least I know what's happening um, what are we going here okay so uh, line 1 our first passenger service is actually making us a small profit fantastic so we've done something right we might, might have messed up a little bit with the train but I'm not too sure why it's doing that. Let me sell these vehicles because I don't want to lose money. 
because they do age. Oh, did I bought the wrong vehicles, didn't I, I think? Is that what it was? Yes. Oh, come on now. <laughs> what an amateur mistake. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. So we've got 16 oil waiting at the moment. It's currently producing 32 in here. Now, I wonder how much this is going to pay us. I would assume because it's oil, we're going to earn a lot of money. Now, I don't think anyone has anything. No. What about you? No. No. So all the vehicles that are currently coming here are not going to earn us anything. What about you? No. I'm guessing one of the new vehicles will have... Probably the one right at the very end. Four of four. Okay, so let's follow this one. I think if we click this. Oh wow, we can actually go from their perspective. That's really cool. Is there a way of just following it now? We got here reverse, go to depot, set line, stop. I just want to follow it. Is it this? Yeah, there we go. And if we speed the game up, whoops, that again. It is a long old journey doing it this way. Well, I can imagine once you kind of go forward in time and you, we've got like combustion engine and we're not just using horses, and we've got trains, planes, and boats. The difference this is going to make, <laughs> I think it's going to be. Fantastic. I know I'm going to have a lot of fun playing this game. I've made a few amateur mistakes already, but that's, that's a good thing for me, because if the game was too simple, then I'd probably get bored very quickly. So I like the fact that, although it's easy to pick up and play, it's still making me think a little bit, and that's what I like. Now, bearing in mind, I'm playing this on easy at the moment, so it should be relatively easy from a financial point of view, but... I think the game has a lot of promise. And, and thus far, with the exception of not being able to edge scroll to the right, I don't seem to have any issues with it. And there's no lag. I mean, we'll see what happens when there's more vehicles in the game, but it runs very, very smoothly. Apparently as well, I do believe the vehicles will show age over time, so things will start to get dirty and rust and things like that. Let's slow the game down. Let's see how much this is going to make us. They had four items in there. Oh, 9,000. Nice. Now, I know I've invested a lot more money than that, but that's brilliant. Okay, so this has actually got some stuff waiting as well. The question is... Do I... Do I set up another line to either Margate, because it must have some industry, well, Margate would make more sense, I guess, than Stevenage. So we could send the fuel. There must be some industry over here. Yep, there is. So should we set up another line, do you think? To come across here and deliver the fuel. And I'm guessing somebody must want... Sorry, not fuel. It Was, was it oil or fuel they wanted? It was fuel. Yeah, fuel. Somebody must want oil, though. What is that commercial? Maybe that's yeah, for making plastic, isn't it? So it is one of the other factories. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. Is there any towns close by? No. We could run a, a bus route up here or a train. <laughs> I don't want to spend any more money on trains. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. If you really like um, what you're seeing so far, don't forget to hit the like button. That's the most important part. Because that's how I definitely know if those people that shy away from commenting but that lets me know what people are really thinking but yeah I think I don't know if we should should we send what this is producing across I think yeah I think it's, it's a good a good option maybe let me know I'll leave it to you and I think we might even set up some bus routes within the town so from one side to the other I, I don't really know I'd be interested to see what you guys think anyway but I'm gonna leave this episode right here so until next time as always Take care.